Hey everyone, this is Vicki with Messy Table Studio here today on behalf of My Creative Year, hashtag My Creative Year Facebook group. Um, the theme for the month of September is atmosphere. So I've been struggling about how to do atmosphere. I didn't want to do planets, I didn't want to do outer space. And then something came to me today while I was coffee dyeing paper. So I'm going to show you pages of what will be a book about something in the atmosphere. So let me get started and gather up a couple things. I'll be right back. Okay, so I live about a half an hour away from the Dollar Tree and I went and bought a bunch of these pans to do my dyeing in and quit drying stuff in the oven. I have been drying stuff in the oven for a while and I decided it's just too stinking hot in Texas in the summer months to turn that oven on to dry paper. Yes, it does go faster, but I'm not in any hurry. So why bother? So this is eight and a half by 11 computer paper. And this is Plain Jane Tattered Angel Spray. It's a yellow. And since I'm thinking of atmosphere, I want to use this. So what I do is, I do not pre-wet the paper. I spray the spray on the paper. Just kind of splotchy. Let me move my glass of water around here. I'll be drinking yellow spray. I have, oh, wrong bottle. I have a bottle that's labeled alcohol. This is isopropyl. I think this is a 71%. And I go back and kind of tilt it up and saturate the paper with alcohol spray. And it causes, because it's saturated, stuff gets runny and I like runny. Then I take my coffee and I will kind of smudge and see how it kind of resists. It kind of sits on top of the paper. Eventually it relents and it will soak into the paper. So then I take it and I shake it up. Now I don't want it to be all coffee. I like the kind of runny look on it, but I still want to see some of that yellow. So I leave it like this then. I flip it over because sometimes when you do stuff you have these spots on the back and if you press down a little bit you don't have to spray anymore because it's still wet on the other side and sometimes the wetness underneath it because this is, this is these are the pans that have the bumps on them you can move the water or the liquid underneath the paper around and it's done. So let's do another one. Uh, let me find a piece of it. This is one that I did earlier. And then this is number four. I got a little heavy handed with the coffee, but it'll look cool once it's dried. Let's do another one here. This is going to go in a journal, a large size journal. Um, I want all the paper to basically be the yellow coffee stained paper. There we go. This time I'm going to try water. I have my little spray bottles labeled and they're up close to where I'm sitting so I know. Alcohol or water, I don't suppose it really matters, although I think the papers that have the alcohol dry much faster than the ones that don't. So I'm not really touching the paper, I'm just doing the brush thing. And now I'm going to let it scooch around and do its thing. This doesn't require a lot of effort other than it just takes a little time to dry. And since I'm not in any hurry, I don't really care. Because I stack these pans up, go off and vacuum, do laundry, go about my business, come back in a couple hours, and they're dry. I have the ceiling fan on in the room here, and I think the thermostat on the house is set at, uh, set at 76, so it is a little um, 
you know, it's not cold, but there's moving air here that's pleasant. There's that one. So, all I'm doing is just wetting the paper. Now this one, I will pour water on it. I do lots of different ways to see if I can get lots of different effects. I don't want them all to look the same, but I want the same general colors. Just move the pan around. There we go. Let's try to see what it looks like with the spray. Oh, that's lovely. Mmm, love it. There we go. And I'm going to let some of that spray mix in with some of the coffee from the last time I coffee dyed on these trays. I'm not one to keep my dyeing a pure... Like, it, if um, there's leftover spray from the last time, I wet it and incorporate it in whatever it is I'm spraying the next time around. Sort of like, you know, the, the grunge on jelly plates. I don't clean it off because I like the way it looks. Unless it's something that has to be pristine, I'm loving the, the crispy bits, the, you know, dried dried stuff. And I, re I really do like it. There we go. See, I still want yellow but I'm liking the coffee look. Now, I could do it this way. Let me flip this over. Whoops, I'll tear the corners there. That's the only thing, you have to be very careful not to tear your corners up. See, there's a lot of open space here. And look at that, I don't have to really do anything except for press my finger down and all the liquid in the bottom that's trapped in those little crevices here, you just kind of press it down and they kind of migrate toward that space. I can do this. Don't you know it. <laughs> okay, so I did all the papers. I dried them, and I just cut them in half uh, lengthwise, so they are half of a sheet of 8.5 by 11, so they're 5.5 by 8. Um, and there's all kinds of different, but they're all based on yellow and orange, and then the coffee dyed. So now I'm going to assemble them. Okay, so I have a cinch that was... Um, bought for me by my youngest child two years ago for a Christmas gift. And it's been in the box basically for two years <laughs> until I decided recently that I needed to get out and um, play with it. So those of you who don't have a cinch, I have to give a disclaimer, they are not cheap. So if you can get a 40% off coupon or some kind of coupon on them, I suggest you use them because this bad boy ain't cheap. Okay, and then... Um, people told me when I got it, start buying the coils, and I got two sets of these for 75 cents, uh, at Hobby Lobby. The regular price was $2.99, and I got two long of the gold coils for 75 cents. I have a white coil in here that used on another project, this little bitty one. It came somewhere, from somewhere else, but today I think I'm going to use the gold coils. So, what I have to do is figure out how many holes I want poked in my papers. So I'm going to take a look at this. So my papers are 8 inches long, but I want them all centered, but I want to have enough, I want to have enough on the top and the bottom that there's no coil there. Although you could poke the holes so that you have the coils all the way up, but I don't really think I want to do that. Uh, so I think I'm going to do it this way. I want to make sure they're in, the papers are aligned very well. And then you just mash down and pokes a bunch of holes in your paper for you. So I don't want to move anything. Just leave this alone. Don't touch it. You just slide your paper in and make sure it's aligned with this part here and tucked in nicely to where everything's smooth. And it tells you that it is not going to do X amount of, after a certain amount of pieces of paper, it will not poke the holes. I poked it through some very heavy duty chipboard and let me tell you what, it took a lot of muscle 
to um, get these things to go through it. So I'm going to finish doing this and then I'll be back to show you the quail. Okay, so I, one of the things that I learned when I made my very first book with the, fen the cinch, and this is the very first book I ever made with it, is that you need to make sure before you put the spirals in that you have already covered your um, front and back with whatever you're going to, if you're going to do any decorating on it, you need to make sure that you do it before you poke the holes because this is what happens when you don't think ahead. I covered the inside, you know, folded the papers over on the inside, and then I had to put this piece to cover up the folds from the, from the other side. But what I didn't think about is I had not poked holes in this yet. And when I did that, this is what happened. I had to pull some of the paper away because it was unsightly and it got stuck and it was a mess. So learn from my mistake. Decorate your cover first before you poke your holes in it with the cinch. Same thing. Well, this one, I think I learned from that. No, nope, I didn't. Um, this one went a lot better than the other side did. I don't know why, but this one went much more smoothly. This one did not go so well. <laughs> So learn from my mistakes. Don't um, don't get don't just go off half cocked like I usually do. And um, you need to go ahead and make sure that when you do this, that your holes are poked. This is covered first, and then poke the holes. That's what I mean to say. All right. So what I'm going to do now is, and I'll probably fast forward through this part because, you know, I have this white paper that I really love. And I've had it for many years now. I bought it when Toys R Us went, went out of sale in Virginia Beach. And it was a thicker roll than this. I think that's where I got it from. What does it say? It doesn't. Okay, anyway. So um, I've had this a long time. And I use it for the larger journals that I that I cover. that And for larger pieces where I'm on a roll. And I just roll it out and art all over it. Then I cut it up and cover uh, journals and things with it. So I'm going to do that with this. I'm just going to decorate the daylights out of it, a long roll of it. Then I'm going to cut it up and cover what will be the cover to um, these pieces of paper right here that you saw me dye and poke holes in. So I managed to get this done in the right order. So I, I want to stay on a, on a good roll here. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and decorate this, and then I will be back to cover the front and the back and the inside of both sides. Then I will poke the holes in the cardboard or the chipboard. Then I will put the, um, the rings on and smush them so they close up. And that will be it. All right, so I will see you guys on the other side.
Jumped the gun a little bit. Um, got the cinch back on the desk. There's my front cover, which you guys saw earlier. There's the inside of the front, which I probably should have used as the front of the front. Because I kind of like this thing right here. Anyway, then I have all my papers here. Uh, where's my papers? Paper, come on. <laughs> Son of a gun. Ooh. Um, here's the inside of the back cover. And there is the back of the back. Which maybe should be the front of the front. Maybe I should make this the front. Hmm. I can make this the back and this the front. Yep, that'll do it. <laughs> Alrighty then. I like this part. Got more on it. Alright, so there we go. So that's what I'll do. So um, last night to test to see if I could figure out how to do this, I took the cover and I lined it up with the paper and I stuck it in here to make sure that everything lined up well it won't it won't scoot in there now because it's too thick but anyway I lined it all up to make sure everything would be okay together and then I punched my cover before I remembered I was supposed to do it on camera so what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna take this do I want to go this way for the cover? Let's go this way for the cover. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to um, draw holes in here with my pen or my pencil because I'm not really confident. It's the only second time I've used my machine. And I'm going to take my pencil and kind of mark every other one. I don't think that those of you who are experienced do this, but... I'm new at this, so this is the way I'm doing it. I want to make sure that this first hole is lined up with the first hole maker on here. And it is butted up there fine. And then push. Oh my god, I have to stand up. <laughs> there we go. So... This off the table and there is the front cover here is the back cover and the holes line up perfectly yay this would not be the time to muck up something right here are the holes that should line up with the cover uh oh <laughs> Uh, it helps if you pay attention what you're doing. Okay, so there's that. They line up. I don't know if you can see it, but you can see. Can you see through? The, there you go. See? There's, you can see through it. Okay, so they're all lined up. And I wanted to have a little space between where the page is and where the book is in case I get carried away doing something weird. That gives me plenty of room. So I have this, and then I'm going to take care of the coil business. All right, so you have to turn your machine around the opposite direction, and I cannot get this on camera because of what I've got sitting in front of the, oops, turn it sideways. This is where you're going to, let me put this down. Oh, maybe it's better if I use it. Yeah, it gives me more room. All right, so what you do here is you put your coil on here. Then you start threading your paper, your cover, and everything on here. Once you've done that, then you got to squeeze the coil shut, and that's on the other end of the machine. All right, let me see what I got working here. And you need a set of... That's too short. Oh, it's one thing too short. Um... You need to make sure that you have uh, some kind of a wire cutter because you're going to have to cut this if it's too, like, I only have, let's see here, there's 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 holes in there, so I have to have 12 of these 
and then after that I can cut it. But because I'm a little paranoid, since this is, you know, my first time, second time doing this, I'm going to, you put this, I think you put this in between them. Yeah. Whoops. There you go. You have to thread it on here. And it holds the coils while you put your stuff on. So the first thing I'm going to put on is the front cover. I wish I could scoot this over further, but I can't. And I'm going to take this and line this up with all the holes. I think I have this on bass backwards. <laughs> nope, I had it on right the first time, I think. I'm going to put it on here like this. There we go. I think that's on there good enough. Some of these might be a little bent. I've had these coils for a long time and they have been joggled around from moving. All right, let's see if I can get this on here right. All right, so I line this up with the coils and this is not going well. <laughs> Let me try this again. Okay, I got it on here and I see where it's gonna go. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put these on here for a moment, like this, so I know where to cut my wires. I'm just going to put it around here. There's the holes. Come on. I don't want to leave my wire too long, and I also don't want to cut it too short, because once you've cut it, you're committed. There we go. So I know that I can... I have 12 of these. I have 12 of these on here and I need to cut it. There's the last hole right here and I want to make sure that I cut it so that it works okay. All right, so I told you you need to have yourself a wire cutter. So I have one of these and you know, if all else fails, you should dig out the directions and read the directions. Something I am most unfamiliar with. All right, so I'm gonna take this and cut this in between. Oops, sorry. Cut this in between, because this is the last hole, and then this is just cardboard. So I'm gonna take this and cut it off. Now I'm gonna take this and put this back on Well, pew. All right, that should, whoop, whoop, whoop. Because I've bent this around so much and fooled around with it, this is bent a little out of shape, this last one here. All right, let's see if I can get these on here. There, there's the cover. Uh, I can't. I'm sorry, I can't show you any further on the screen because there's so much stuff in front and this thing is so wide. Well, maybe I could do it sideways. What was I thinking? There we go. Sideways. And then what you do after that is you just spend all your time threading your paper on there. You can do more than one sheet at a time. You just put it all on there. So on and so forth. So I'm going to shut off the camera while I do this because, believe me, it's not that stinking exciting. And then I'll, put, I'll come back on and put the back cover on. Okay, so right before I started threading the rest of the paper on, I decided that I would like a vellum front page and back page. So I, took, I cut a piece of vellum uh, in half and put one took all my other stuff out and put the vellum on the front and the back now i'm going to put the back cover on there we go so i'm going to take this off now on the back of the machine it's got this little crank knob here let me see if i can get it in the frame got this little crank knob 
and it shows you how tight you can make your coils. It's got uh, one qu uh, three eighths, one half, five eighths, three fourths, seven eighths, one inch, one and a half inch, uh, one and a quarter, one and eighth, and one and a fourth inch. And when you do that, what you're doing is you're smashing your coils closed. So you put them in here. You make sure they're in there where you need for them to be. And then what you clock this is how large or small the coil is going to smash shut. Because the coil is open. And when you mash this thing down, it's going to close the coil to whatever you dial this to. So I want this to be... Ugh, push and turn. Yeah, push and turn. Easier said than done. I want my coils to be seven eighths because in case this gets fat well you know what let me just make it one inch if I use this for a glue book I want to make sure that I have enough room for expansion in the coil so all right so I've got the coils butted up against the machine and this thing's gonna mash down and close the coils and it only mashes it to where you tell it to so it's only mashing it down one inch let up and see that wasn't enough so I'm gonna have to try this again I think maybe this needs to be smashed closer all right did it smash it nope all right so we're gonna have to do smaller than that because I think my coil oh. <laughs> awesome all right little cricket face here we need to move the, the coil back push and turn let's try let's try seven eighths of an inch and see if that does it Yep, and see, it's still not closed enough, so I'm going to have to do it a little smaller. Let me put it back in there. All right, so let's do push and turn. Three-fourths of an inch. Uh, all right, so this is going to be a nice fat book. Or a skinny book the rate I'm going. Alright, so now I made the coil smaller. So it kind of closed it up. And I can still open the book. Alright, so let me get this sitch off the table. The nice thing is, this has a uh, little belt that's in here. And it pulls out. It's elastic. You pull it out, up, and it clamps it shut. And you can store this thing up, right side up and it takes up little or no space on a shelf. Mine's going on the floor for a while. All right, so I think we made this the front. So there's the front of my book. There's the vellum for the front page. Here are all my pages that I did the paper dyeing, coffee dyeing for. And then the back piece is vellum. All right, so this was for my creative year for the word atmosphere so this was my atmosphere there's my sun planets stars um, uh, other stars and then I tried to make this look like the Milky Way when I painted it so there's the suns there's planets there's different kinds of stars and the Milky Way okay and last night, after I finished, I worked on this for a while till I couldn't see anymore. And I thought, well, let me draw. So I did have a, another piece of paper with the painting left over it. And I'm going to doodle on this and use this for something else. So nothing goes to waste. Especially when you spend all that time doodling on it. Because it takes forever. Alright, so this is um, my contribution to the theme for the month for Atmosphere. There are my planets, my stars, and the Milky Way with my papers that I'm going to use for something. I don't know what exactly.
but I wanted it to be yellow and bright and sunshiny and cheerful. I may use it as a glue book. I may use it for a doodle book. I just don't know yet, but I just wanted to cover another book and play with that cinch. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next month. Bye-bye.